<laughs> so since some of you are still asleep, uh, let's go ahead and let's stand up. Yeah, stand up. Yep. So if you don't want to yawn over here in the corner. <laughs> All right, so get moving a little bit. Keep moving, shake it out. Do some twists, get your blood flowing a little bit. Some of you have been sitting for too long and sitting to your spine is like sugar to your teeth and we don't want that. So we're gonna move a little bit. But who wants to lose 10, 15, 20, 30 pounds in the next 45 days? Say aye. 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 Who wants to be able to prevent 80% of all chronic disease? Say aye. aye. Who wants to learn more about health in the next hour and a half than you've learned in the last two decades? Say aye. Aye. Huh? Okay, go ahead and sit down. But imagine this though. Imagine if today you walked away with the understanding, the knowledge, to be able to finally lose the weight that you've always wanted to. Imagine being able to reduce the blood pressure or reduce the cholesterol or reduce or improve type 2 diabetes or even reverse it. Imagine learning the most important aspect when it comes to overall health and well-being that your doctors have never told you. If you learned all of those things this morning, would it be a well investment of your time today? Yes or yes? Yes. Yes? yes. yes. Okay, so I have two rules. How many rules? Two. two. How many rules? Two. 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 Rule number one is you've got to like get engaged. The research is so clear on this. The more you participate, uh, the more you laugh at my dad jokes, the more you raise your hand or you shout out, the more you engage, the more you retain. And the more you retain, the more potential you are to implement. And the more you implement, the bigger the possibility that you are completely, your health is radically different over the next 30 to 60 days. So if that's what you're looking for, and if you want your life to change for the better, you've got to engage. Fair or fair? Fair. Okay, all right. So if that's the case then, imagine this. Imagine in 30 days or 60 days that you are 10, 15, 20 pounds lighter. Imagine that you have two times the amount of energy, more energy than you had in years. Imagine being able to eliminate 80% of the medications. Imagine having, I don't know, the libido of a 25 year old, I don't know. Imagine knowing that you are empowered with the understanding to protect you and your family's health for the next 20, 30 years. So, that's my goal today. My goal today is to empower you with that understanding. So here, now rule number two though, is to have fun. I'm here to have a good time. I, I really wanna make this a really good experience. So uh, again, you have to laugh at my dad jokes. Fair enough? Okay, all right. So there are five things that I want you to learn today. I have a cheat sheet. So five things, just five. Everyone say five. Five. All right. Number one is the understanding of metabolic disease and the underlying causes of that. Number two is the five solutions to preventing, improving, and yes, even reversing the epidemic of metabolic disease. Number three is what are the top reasons why you can't lose weight. Number four is the exact plan to shift your metabolism to become a, to become a fat burning machine and to lose the 5, 10, 15, or 50 pounds that you want. And number five is the most important, but it's the number one most important concept when it comes to overall health that your doctors have never told you. Those are the five things that we want to walk away with today. So we did this exact seminar for my patients early in February-ish, and I just want to brag a little bit, but we did a 45-day challenge post the event, and all of you have the opportunity to do a 45 challenge after that. We're all going to do this. Uh, there's a stress survey. It's like a couple pages back. Be sure to fill that out. Um, your information at the bottom, that is how you are going to get into the 45 day challenge. Whether you are going to crush it and really commit and lose the 30 or 40 pounds, or if you're just kind of interested and you want to learn more about the additional content that we'll provide, just make sure you turn that in. Uh, there's going to be an opportunity for a lot of follow up to this event. If some of you are really looking for help, we are accepting new patients and we have a special going on for those of you that would like to join the practice and check us out. But this is Brian, and I got to brag on him. He lost 20 pounds in the first three weeks of doing our challenge. 
Now, we had several patients to join the challenge, and we had some crazy stories and some weight loss testimonies, but it wasn't just the weight loss, it's, it's what the weight loss means. So my goal isn't to teach you how to lose weight, my goal is to teach you how to be healthy. Because healthy people are a healthy weight, and just ab access of weight is just a, a sign that there's metabolic disease processes occurring. So anyway, I just wanna kind of brag on what the potential is, is if you commit to what I'm gonna teach you today. So, but my name is Dr. Brent DeLong. I'm a Max Living Health uh, doctor here in Norman, Oklahoma. We have an office really just down the road over there on like Flood, just behind like the OnQ and that new Starbucks over there. And like I said, we are accepting new patients. If you're interested in seeking out additional help, what you like, what we hear today, then we are, we'll be able to set you up maybe this afternoon or after this with a, a new patient appointment. But um, I've been in practice for over 12 years. I've worked with tens of thousands of patients from almost every single dysfunction, disease process you could think of. And this is one of the biggest differences between the current medical system and a healthcare system. In the medical world, they really, really have this weird fetish about trying to diagnose you and trying to treat that dysfunction or disease with chemistry, okay? Um, and a vitalistic or a health approach, our goal is to get you so gosh darn healthy that you don't need the medication. Do you guys understand the difference in that approach? If you have diabetes and you go to the medical doctor, you get put on what? Metformin. Metformin or insulin. And how long do you have to take that for? Yeah. Forever. Yeah, their goal isn't to help cure your diabetes, it's to manage the disease process. But hopefully you guys recognize that if you follow the right sort of processes and protocols and you get your body healthy, that your blood sugar can regulate on its own. Your insulin responses can't heal. And that's ultimately what we wanna do on this side of it, is we wanna help people empower themselves to understand how to get healthy so that way disease doesn't occur. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So heart disease, cancer, diabetes, even a lot of autoimmune diseases, do you guys know what they all have in common? Yeah, <laughs> They're all metabolic diseases. But yes, inflammation is a huge part of it as well. They're all metabolic diseases. They all fall under that one umbrella of metabolic disease. So it's really important to understand what this is. In fact, the statistic is kind of crazy to imagine this, but it's 88% of Americans have a metabolic disease. Yeah, 88%. Do you guys know what the, uh, so just so you have a reference of what metabolic disease is, there's a couple criteria to like being diagnosed with metabolic disease. So you have an elevated waist circumference, and this is 34 inches, and this is 41 inches. So if you're a guy, your waist is over 41 inches, that's, that's a sign of metabolic disease, or it's one of the components. If you're a female and it's over 34, that's another sign. Elevated triglycerides, low HDL and high, uh, low HDL or high uh, uh, LDL, high LDL, uh, low HDL. Elevated blood pressure, and then obviously like high blood sugar. Those are some of the criteria. So blood sugar, blood pressure, low HDL, high triglycerides, and an excess of waist circumference. So here's the thing though, is you have to just have a few out of the five. So you can actually be at a normal weight and have metabolic disease. So don't just think because you're not in the obese category that you might not have metabolic disease processes. But these are the things that metabolic disease process will eventually create. And this is what we want to be scared of. The heart disease, the lipid, the hypertension, the type two diabetes, dementia, which is also now known as type three diabetes. Have you guys heard of that? Type three diabetes, is that's what dementia is. Cancer, uh, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and then non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. These are what metabolic dysfunctions will create. So these things that I talked about, that's what the outcome will be if we don't start to change it, okay? So here are symptoms or signs of metabolic disease. So I want you to really look at this, pay attention, because if you have any of these, just understand that that could be you moving toward this metabolic dysfunction or disease process. Fatigue, thyroid issues, suppressed appetite, cold hands or feet, low libido, PMS or bloating, anxiety, depression, hair loss, brittle nails, insomnia, infertility, irritability or obesity. Raise your hand if you know someone who has more than one of those. Just real quick, look around the room. 88% of Americans have metabolic disease, metabolic dysfunction, okay? So if you have any of this stuff, just, just know that that's the check engine light on your car starting to flash at you. Now, 
I don't think anyone here would look at that light and just put a bunch of tape over the light and then as the engine is just making that clunk, clunk, clunk sound, you turn the music up and you just drive on. I would imagine no one would do that. Because what would happen to your car? Well, it would blow up, right? No one would do that. But yet when, we, when our body gives us these warning signs, it's very easy for us to just ignore it, take a Tylenol, take some Tums, or some indigestion medication, or a cholesterol drug, or whatever it is, and just cover up the symptom. Meanwhile, the engine is consistently causing more and more damage and disease process. 41% of the United States is obese, and this is really, really crazy, but the childhood obesity rates are increasing astronomically. Do you guys know what the definition of insanity is? What is what's the definition of insanity? Yes, it's, 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 so it is insane to think that we could continue to live like everyone else is living and expect a different result. definition of insanity is doing the same thing, expecting a different result. Understand that we live just the standard American lifestyle. There is like almost zero chance that you won't end up with one of those major disease processes. So who has kids or grandkids in, in the room? Have you guys heard this? This is the first time in human history where our children, this generation right here, is said to have a shorter life expectancy than us. Who's heard that? Why is that? Why is that? That the first time in human history that our children are gonna get sicker and die younger than we? It is because heart disease, cancers, all these rates are going up and up every single year. Cancer is said to increase another like 75% by 2030. You guys know what autism is? If autism follows, it follows its current trend, it will be one out of two by like 2029 or some crazy number like that. So my purpose and my job, my mission in life is to help people understand that we have to do something radically different to avoid that outcome, okay? So these are the main things that affect your metabolism. Age, clearly, the older we are, the slower metabolism gets, and it's not a sentence, it just means that we maybe have to try a little bit harder as we age than when we're young, okay? Genetics play a role, diet, exercise, lifestyle. These are the main things that we have the ability to influence. Now when you say genes, well how do you influence your genes? Genes are not like, like it, it's not, genes are like the blueprint of a building. They are not like the building material. So the really the new research is about epigenetics. Who's ever heard of epigenetics? Epigenetics is your genetic expression. So if you have, if you don't have heart disease genes in your family, but you eat McDonald's, if you, if you eat McDonald's every day, guess what you'll end up at finding? Heart disease genes. Okay? But if you, have gen if you have these genetic predispositions, it doesn't mean that, that you're sentenced to get that. It just means that you have to try a little bit harder. So genes are like the bullets, lifestyle is like the trigger pull. So we have all the ability to influence which genes are turned off and turned on. Does that make sense? So that should be very, very empowering. If you have ever been told it's just your genetics, it's just because your parents, like, 
children are not overweight or you're not overweight because of your like like it, it runs in your family you're you're overweight or your kids are overweight because nobody runs in your family <laughs> that, that's right. Okay. Thank you for laughing at that. <laughs> so here, so here are the top reasons that most people do not lose weight. They have too many foods that ele consistently elevate their insulin. They eat too often. They consistently have cortisol, so stress hormone responses, toxicity, exposure, accumulation, liver dysfunction, or fatty liver issues. They're not burning enough fuel or there's interference in their nervous system and their body's inability to self-regulate properly. Those are the top main reasons. Um, can you, um, if you don't have an appetite because uh, I don't, I can drink three cups of coffee uh -huh. and skip breakfast. Uh -huh. And so, well, so caffeine is a caffeine is an appetite suppressant. I'll talk about that later. Oh, that's actually in the in my problem. Well, yes. No okay. okay. All right. So those are the main reasons we can't lose weight. So now let's talk about boosting fat loss, the max living weight. So what is the healthiest way to lose weight? Because again, the goal isn't to just lose weight. Because there's some really crazy nutrition or diet plans out there, like the Hollywood cookie diet or the Taco Bell diet. There's lots of ways you can lose weight, but the problem is you'll just lose weight and, a, and end up in a lighter coffin. <laughs> Our goal isn't to do that. Our goal is to get healthy so we're at a healthy weight. Yes or yes? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. So it's all about understanding your metabolic switches. These are the main players. These are the hormones that influence metabolic function. So my goal is to help you understand how to turn these switches on and off, okay? Has everybody heard of insulin before? Okay, so insulin is the fat storing hormone. When you have high levels of insulin, your body stores fat, okay? Glycogen is basically stored energy. It's how your body stores sugar. Leptin is the hormone that turn, tells your body to burn fat. And you've heard of insulin resistance, yes? Have you ever heard of leptin resistance? Leptin resistance is what happens when you have all these excess fat stores, your body's constantly trying to tell yourself to burn fat, and all of a sudden there's too much elevated hormone for too long, and the body just becomes deaf to the leptin, just like you can be deaf to insulin, insulin resistance, okay? And then cortisol is a stress hormone. So these are the things that influence your body's ability to burn fat for fuel, or to have a very slow sluggish metabolism. Now these are the five ways, and these are, this, these are in your notes. You guys recognize you have a notes packet? You guys can follow along and write, have writer downers. Didn't know that? You just thought all those papers were there just to like pull them out on the table? <laughs> I thought this was just to, just to hold the table down and pull it away. So these are the five ways we are going to revolutionize your metabolism. Clean eating, reducing stress, minimizing toxins, move the body and make sure your body is functioning properly. This is also the five essentials of max living. This is what our approach to health is all based on. It's the five essentials of health. Every single health category under the sun falls under one of these five essentials. So patients in our office, our goal is to help them implement these five essentials so they don't just like feel a little bit better, but again, so they can avoid these chronic disease processes and have life living on their terms, not burdened by disease processes, okay? So number one, is it's clean, whole food nutrition. This is really interesting, but you guys probably have been exposed to lots of different diet plans, yes or yes? Who's ever tried a diet? <laughs> <laughs> Only a couple of you raise your hand. <laughs> Liars! <laughs> okay, so here's the reality. All good nutrition plans are pretty similar. There might be a little bit of tweaks in some of the macronutrient breakdown if you're doing paleo or carnivore or keto. But at the end of the day, you can do all those diets and lose weight and do them very wrong and end up very, very sick, okay? At the end of the day, it's about eating really clean, real food. What do I mean by clean food? Can someone give me an idea what I'm talking about? Not What's processed. clean food? Not processed. Yeah, just avoid the fake stuff. Like, if it's made by God, it's healthy. If it's made by man, odds are it's not super good for you, okay? The more it's processed, typically the worse it is. If you're eating something and it has like 40 ingredients, mm, I'd probably not eat that, okay? If you can't pronounce an ingredient, mm, probably wouldn't eat that, okay? How many ingredients are in an apple? One. 
<laughs> All right, there you go. So really basic, is, is that simple? Is that too simple? No. I will say this. I had some patients say this before, and it's very true, and I agree with them, but eating healthy is expensive. Who's ever thought or said that before? Yes or yes? Yes. yes. Okay, I agree. Buying healthy food is more expensive than living cheaply, but cancer is more expensive. A heart attack is more expensive. Living with diabetes is significantly more expensive than just spending a couple extra bucks on a healthier version. Yes or yes? Yes. yes. It, it all comes down to this. It comes down to your value. It comes down to your standard. Everyone has a standard. Your standard might be like you don't do cocaine, right? or you don't smoke, <laughs> or you don't eat McDonald's. Like there's a standard that you all have somewhere in the spectrum. If we can just elevate our standard just a smidge, that is a healthy outcome. Yes or yes? Yes. Okay, so whole food nutrition. This is the Max Living Advanced Plan. So this is the nutrition protocol that we want our patients to implement. Now there's two protocols that we, when it comes to good healthy nutrition. We have like the, just the Max Living Nutrition Plan and then we have the Advanced Plan. The Advanced Plan, the really the goal with the Advanced Plan is to become a fat burner. It is to detox, it is to reduce inflammation, it is to balance hormones. It's also known as a healing diet, and yes, it is absolutely way more strict than just a healthy nutrition plan, but it's designed to reverse disease. It is designed to create total health recovery, okay? Once we achieve the health that we want, it's easier to maintain, which is a normal healthy diet. So here's kind of the rules to the advanced plan. You have to choose better carbohydrates. So less processed carbs. Technically on the advanced plan, you want to avoid anything that is gonna cause an insulin response. So anything that's high in the glycemic index. So on a healing diet, you want to be able to even avoid like, like fruit that is higher on the glycemic index. So like you wanna avoid bananas. Why is that? Well, if you're constantly elevating your insulin levels and putting sugar in the body, even though it's a healthy sugar, it's harder to heal. So if we're looking for a total health restoration, if you wanna lose weight and become a fat burner, you gotta be able to eliminate things that are gonna elevate your insulin. Now, do you need to do that forever? Am I telling you to never eat like another banana or another healthy fruit? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, but if we're trying to reduce blood pressure, cholesterol, reduce inflammation, heal from arthritis or digit, whatever it is, you gotta make sure you're following the plan though. Does that make sense? Okay, so on the advanced plan, you can have stuff like berries because they're low on the glycemic index. Granny Smith apples, grapefruits, okay? And again, we're avoiding all the processed carbs. So clearly like pastas, breads, like stuff like that. So here's kind of something interesting. They did this on the Dr. Oz show. Who's ever watched the Dr. Oz show before? So what they did is they, they took a group of ladies and they fed, and they fed them um, some candy bars and they measured their blood glucose. And it was, it was fine, obviously, that's no surprise, right? No surprise, okay. The next day they had them eat just a, a, a piece of uh, wheat bread and they measured their glucose levels. You would imagine the candy bar elevated blood sugar higher. It wasn't, it was the whole wheat bread. So because you are eating whole wheat bread, do not for one second think that that's a healthy food. Wheat today, gluten today, is not what it was 50 years ago. It is so altered and it is so changed. It's just, it's not a super healthy food. Now I'm not saying you can't ever have wheat bread again. I'm just saying if we're doing the advanced plan, if we're doing a healing diet, you've got to avoid it for a while. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I just worth anybody's bubble? No? That's probably yeah, comes to no surprise. Because <laughs> he likes the bagel bread. See? It, you know, again, if we're trying to reverse the disease it. process, Sorry, you gotta avoid it for a while. Okay, all right, number one is fix the fats, perfect your proteins, and trash the toxins. Very simple, everyone say, clean up the carbs. Clean up the carbs. Everyone say, fix the fats. Everyone say, perfect the proteins. Perfect the proteins. Everyone say, trash the toxins. Okay, so let's learn, let's learn what that really means. Okay, so here are the three major dangers. Too much sugar, not enough good fats, and too many toxins. Those are the three problems that we all have to face, okay? Just three, there's only three, that's the good news, there's only three of them, <laughs> okay? Just three. All right, so here's the problem, sugar. It's known as the anti-nutrient. 
Your body responds to it like a toxin. It is the number one cause of obesity. It creates acidity in the body, and most disease processes, especially stuff like cancer, occur in an acidic environment. It is the cause of inflammation, and inflammation is the cause of most metabolic disease processes like heart disease, cancers, and diabetes. It will ruin your cholesterol, it'll ruin your hormones, it will cause, it's a fast track to obviously diabetes, leading cause of heart disease, and if you want to grow cancer quickly, eat sugar. Cancer cells have eight times more receptor sites to sugar than a healthy normal cell does. In fact, by definition, a cancer cell has a broken metabolism and it utilizes sugar for fuel. If you want to grow cancer, it's like eating, so eating sugar is like dumping gasoline on a fire, okay? So we have to eliminate as much of this as possible. Now, what's worse than sugar though? What's worse than sugar? Fake sugar. Okay, some of you have been duped by the marketing ploy that the food industry has done and they try to give you these zero calorie things. The, the artificial stuff like sucralose, sucralose, and there's lots of different names. This is what is so crazy about the, the food industry is they try to manipulate us a whole bunch. And they change the name just to try to fool us. But any sort of artificial sweetener is a neurotoxin. And this is what it's linked to. GI issues, seizures, dizziness, migraines. I can't tell you how many times people come to the office and they're like, Doc, I hear you help a ton of people with migraines. And we start to adjust them. And we obviously they start to improve in all sorts of areas. But then we start to look at some of the nutrition protocols or they walk in drinking a diet soda. I'm like, oh my gosh, like you gotta get rid of that. And then as soon as they like, rever like stop using that, like th their feet stop hurting, their back starts hurt, stop starting, their, their headaches and migraines go away. So again, you gotta eliminate these artificial stuff, blurred vision, allergic reactions. It's actually more linked to obesity. So if you're doing a diet soda, it's more linked to obesity than a regular soda does. Okay, again, it's just a marketing ploy. It's a known carcinogen, so it causes cancer, especially if you cook with it, and it's neurodegenerate, meaning that they do studies where they look at like MRIs of brains, and people who use these artificial sweeteners, they literally have holes burnt into their brain matter. So it's a fast track to dementia. Now, what do I do then if I don't want to have something super, super bland? Well, I use a natural sweetener, like stevia. Or... So, so sucralose, is not natural, but the stevia is. Sucralose is a chemical man-made. Stevia oh, is plant. No more sucralose. Yeah, no more sucralose. Stevia or xylitol or erythritol. Alcohol sugars are okay. Aspartame. Yeah, aspartame is another form of yeah, yeah. Very, very bad. Did I just ruin anybody's day? Yes. But isn't sugar come from a plant? Yes, but it's just so altered. Okay. And and even with so. But even if you consume a bunch of sugar, even if it's natural, it does all those bad things. So you're right, it's too much. Now, if someone is healthy and they don't have metabolic disease and the body regulates and heals and regenerates at a really good level, then they can handle the stress of stuff like sugar. So that brings up a super good point. Here's a philosophical shift, okay? We do not want to change the environment to suit the weakened body. This is a medical approach. <coughs> we don't want to change the environment. We don't want to like Lysol everything. We don't want to like eliminate it. That's based off the germ theory that germs are what make us sick. That's just not true. Louis Pasteur, who developed the germ theory on his deathbed revoking, said it's not really true. It's not, the, it's not the germ that makes you sick, it's the resistance of the host. So our goal isn't to change the environment. Our goal is to get the body so healthy, so strong that it can handle the environment. Don't pray for the easy life. Pray for the strength to endure a good one. Our goal is to get you so healthy that yeah, you can handle some sugar or you can handle a little bit of sucralose. But the problem is if we accumulate and our body gets sick and gets weak from all the bad stuff, then eventually it's gonna cause some massive, massive issues. Does that make, does that make sense? Yep. Yep. So our goal in our practice is to get people so healthy, so strong that they can go garden. They can go play soccer against their kids. <laughs> Like all the stuff that they want to do, okay? So fat is the number one most nutrient deficiency. Now fat got a bad rap because we used to think that fat makes us what? Fat. Yeah, that's why we got all this low fat, no fat stuff on the shelf, right? But that's not true. It's the body's inability to burn fat that makes us fat. Fat doesn't make you fat. It's the body's inability to burn fat that makes you fat. 
Fat is critical for your meta metabolic function. So here are the importances of like healthy fat. Again, it's the number one most nutrient deficiency is healthy fat. It is it's literally every single cell in your entire body has a lipid bilayer, meaning that it's fat. In fact, that's the brain of the cell. When that cell brain gets damaged because you have a lack of fat or too much artificial stuff that's causing inflammation, the brain of the cell gets damaged and that's what allows the disease process to build on a cellular level. So every cell needs healthy fat. And so fat is critical for absorbing vitamins. If you're on a low fat diet, odds are that you're not absorbing any sort of nutrition. Regulates uh, hormones. Every hormone, including testosterone, is made up of healthy fat. So there's an epidemic of hormones imbalances. True or true? Mm -hmm. Estrogen dominance issues, low testosterone, like low T. I think the stat is like 60% of guys over the age of 40 have low T. Yes? You yeah. heard that? Mm -hmm. So a lack of healthy fat is one of the major causes behind that. It is critical for cellular detox detoxification and fat makes up 70% of your brain tissue. So if you are not feeding your brain, you are starving and again, it's a fast track to mental decline and disease processes like Alzheimer's and dementia, okay? And then obviously it's critical for your metabolism to burn fat. So fat is good, but we have to make sure we're getting the correct kind of fat because you have anti-inflammatory fat and you have inflammatory fat. Everyone say anti-inflammatory fat. Anti yes, we want more anti-inflammatory fat. So here's good versus bad. Bad fats, hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated oils. This I would consider almost being worse than sugar is bad damaged fats because of the amount of inflammation it causes in the body. So cottonseed oils, soybean oils, vegetable oils, even though <coughs> vegetables are good, <laughs> vegetable oils is not. That's just, again, it's a marketing trick. Margarine and synthetic butters. Again, back in the day, they tried to tell us fat was bad, so they tried to push all this artificial stuff, okay? And now we're starting to find out how terrible it was. Margarine, is literally a couple molecular bonds away from being plastic. Yeah, so when you're eating margarine or artificial stuff, you're basically eating plastic. And then rancid oils, corn oil or canola oil. This is a tough one because a lot of people have been duped again by some marketing stuff thinking that canola oil was good. It's a modified, genetically modified rapeseed oil and it is terrible. It is highly, highly inflammable. So what are good fats? So what am I talking about when I say healthy fats? Well, extra virgin olive oil, avocado oil, coconut oil. If you're going to just put some oil on like some lettuce, uh, uh, extra virgin olive oil is really, really good. If you're cooking at really low heats, you can use some uh, uh, extra virgin olive oil. But if you're gonna cook anything at a higher heat, you've gotta use avocado oil or maybe even coconut oil. They have higher smoke points. If, you, if you're heating up extra virgin olive oil too much, it'll, it'll actually become carcinogenic. It'll damage the oil, you'll break it down and it becomes very bad for you. So just if you're gonna cook at higher, uh, higher heats, use avocado oil or coconut oil. Raw nut seeds are really healthy fats. Real butter is a healthy anti-inflammatory fat. But again, if you're consuming fat, your body is gonna be able to help burn fat. Grass-fed is a really good source of fat, eggs, whole milks, fatty fishes. Um, now when it comes to proteins, this is important. If you're gonna spend one extra penny on better nutrition, you've got to improve your meat quality. So don't just go and buy all this organic produce. I want you to shift if you have limited funds to start getting healthier versions of meat. And why is that? Well, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the accumulation of toxins and it's the, inflamed, and the inflammation of uh, uh, central fatty acids and the inflammatory response from conventional meat. So what does that mean? You've heard the saying, you are what you eat, yes? Okay, so like that's true, but it's actually, this is the real statement. You are what you ate, ate. You are what you ate, ate, okay? So if the cow is getting fed all this genetically modified corn, all the genetically modified grain, if they're getting pumped full of steroids, hormones, and antibiotics, they're just a sick animal. I mean, if they're like, I don't know if you've ever seen like feedlots, but there's like no grass. It's not like on the picture where like there's a cow in the meadow. Like that's not what it is. They're like knee deep poo, and they're just walking around getting fed all this junk. So they're really, really sick animals. So if you eat that, you accumulate all the toxins that they had and now you become very, very inflamed. Their omega ratio is like 50 to one. 
which is like a walking heart attack. Versus grass-fed is like one to two, or two to one. It's very, very the, the omega ratio is really, really good, very anti-inflammatory, okay? So you gotta make sure you're getting grass-fed or grass-finished beef, free-range chicken, wild-caught fish. Don't do farm-raised fish. If you wanna Google something nasty or YouTube it, it is like crazy how gross these animals are. The salmon, when you buy it in the store, is what color? Pink. Farm-raised salmon, they have to feed them pink dye because they're so sick, they're gray, and they have to feed them this pink dye so they look good in the store. So much for oh. Same thing with the conventional beef. You've heard of nitrates? Who's ever heard of nitrates before? Nitrates are illegal in most every other country. In fact, the National Cancer Society says that they are unfit for human consumption. But what they're used to is to create the meat so it looks red because the animal is so toxic and it keeps it on the shelf longer. So it's just very, very bad for us. And then natural sources of dairy, like I'm not a big fan of dairy just in general, but if you're going to do dairy, the, 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 the rawer, the better. Okay, the less altered it is and pasteurized, the better. So again, foods to avoid at all costs. Anything processed, carbohydrates, sugars, artificial sugars or, or, or sugar substitutes, trans fats, any sort of rancid oils, and then obviously any sort of highly processed foods. And I'll say this again, it's not, it is simple. Like the nutrition I just went through is simple, yes or yes. Did I like revolutionize anybody? Is anybody like brand new? Like, oh my God, I've never heard of that before. It's really, really simple. Being healthy is simple, but it's not easy. What's easy is to go through fast food. What's easy is to buy microwaved food. Just, just so you know, my stance on microwaves, we built a house a year ago and there is zero, there, we did, just didn't build a microwave anymore. So there's no microwave in my house. Our last house that we bought, it was just used for storage. I haven't used a microwave in a decade probably. It is so bad for you. If you want to test that, heat up for nuke, nuke. It's even like you call nuke it, you nuke it. <laughs> Nuke some water, let it cool down, and then give it to your plants, watch what happens. Okay. Um, a quick question. Yep. On the previous slide, yes. highly processed, does that mean the number of ingredients? Or yep. the, because like a time bar had like four ingredients. Yep. But it's not as processed as like a donut. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, now again, like look at the sugar content, like again, like so that's again where we gotta really get, we're good at like reading labels. And this is where like, so I don't have time to go through everything in our, our presentation here today, but so like th this is the kind of stuff that I want you, and the reason I want you to get into it, so it's gonna be a closed Facebook group, we're gonna be able to continue to, to do our 45 day challenge. If you're not on Facebook, we'll just do some email stuff hopefully. But this is what I wanna continue on our conversation because I want someone to maybe ask a question that gives me content to answer. Or I'm gonna consistently kind of give you some of the same stuff that I gave my patients as far as follow up because there's, there's so much more to it and our time is really short and I wanna get you the big pieces. Is that, is that okay? Mm -hmm. But if you're really like wanting that sort of stuff, make, just make sure you get plugged into that, again, that challenge, whether you wanna lose the 45 pounds or you're just wanting to learn more. Fair enough? Okay, all right. Um, so again, I was saying it's, it's, easy, it's simple, but it's not easy. So again, you just have to make the choice that these are my standards and this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put this kind of effort into my overall health because it's easier to keep your health, it's harder to regain your health. There's this saying that says, the man that has their health has a million wishes. The person who doesn't have their health or has lost their health has only one. And what is that wish? Is to get their health back. Okay? I guarantee you, if someone felt chronically ill, that you would sell your house, sell your car, do everything you could to save their life. True or true? I would give every single penny I have if I could get my mom back. She died from cancer a couple years ago. She did not live this. Did not live this lifestyle. I didn't live it growing up either. I mean, I was I was in a standard American lifestyle. I, I grew up eating all the same junk everybody else does. But I, I I would I would give every penny I have just to get my mom back. Does everybody feel the same way about a family member? If it was your kid, I guarantee you do the same thing. Yes or yes? It is easier then to buy a little bit more expensive food or take the time to meal prep than it is to try to heal from cancer, okay? So fasting, who's ever heard of fasting? Okay, so 
This is the different types of fasting. The easiest is this 16-8. Um, let's see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fast forward here real quick. Okay. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to backtrack. I want to skip around here real quick. So when I say fasting, some people get really weirded out because, like, what's the most important meal of the day? Okay. So it's true. Break fast. The meal of breaking your fast is absolutely the most important meal of the day. It doesn't mean it's a morning meal, though. Okay? If you are constantly putting fuel into your body, you will burn fuel. Yes or yes? If you're the kind of person that never lets your gas tank get below halfway, so if you're like halfway, oh, got something at the gas station, fill it back up. Good practice, just FYI, for all you ladies in the room who like to get like, to like E on E. But if you constantly put in gas, when it gets to halfway, you'll never burn the gas at the bottom, correct? So here's the thing. Our bodies are created to store energy. It's pretty amazing to think about it. Our bodies are created to store energy and they store it as glycogen and then as fat, as, access, as excess, okay? But if you never get to a point where your body is able to burn your fat stores and you're constantly putting fuel in, you never burn the fat. Our bodies are created to store energy and to burn energy in times of feast and famine. The problem is if you never famine, you never burn your fat store. So there is zero way you can ever lose the weight if you don't allow your body to utilize your fat stores. Now, you could maybe do a, a, a nutrition protocol without fasting to some extent, but it's not as efficient. And there's a lot of other benefits to fasting that I'm gonna hit on real quick. But our bodies are designed to fast, okay? Um, let me backtrack. So here are the main benefits to fasting. Oh, let me back up one more. So this is the easiest one. It's just basically you just don't eat breakfast until noon. It's like the easiest thing. A lot of us do that anyway. Like, so here's like a, the smallest version of fasting is you just don't get up in the middle of the night and go to the fridge. Like, just don't do that. You're fasting when you sleep, hopefully. So you've probably heard that you shouldn't snack a lot at night, yes? Yeah. Okay, well, like, so if, you, if you're done eating at 8, if you can just wait till noon, you can break your fast. That's a 16-hour fast. Now, I'll talk about some of the benefits. You can also do some advanced stuff, like where you can fast for uh, 24 hours twice a day, or you can just stop eating for a whole, like, so I typically try to fast for 24 hours, technically it's 20 hours, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I, just, I try to do that, and I'll, I'll tell you why I do that. Uh, it, uh, alternating fasting, or just warrior diets, where you're fasting for a day or so, and then you eat a big, uh, so this is a 20 hour fast, and you eat a meal at night, kind of like this one, um, or you just skip meals randomly. One of the best parts of skipping meals randomly uh, is that you get way more stuff done because you don't have to take the time to eat. So, okay. So here are the benefits of fasting, though. So weight loss. So who's ever heard fasting is bad and you should eat consistently throughout the day to help keep your metabolism up? Who's ever heard that? Okay. I don't know where that came from because if you get you consistently put in food, your body will burn the food. You'll never burn fat stores. Does that just make sense? Okay. So benefits are weight loss, healing the digestive system. So when you fast, one of the best things is that your digestive, your digestive system gets a break. So even if you're not gonna really alter your nutrition protocol that much, if you just stop putting junk in it for like 16 hours, your body has the potential to heal a little bit, okay? Uh, it increases insulin sensitivity. So people have diabetes or pre-diabetic or they have just insulin resistant type issues or blood sugars that are imbalanced. If you can fast correctly, it can improve insulin sensitivity. It slows down the aging process. I'll talk about exactly how why that happens. When you fast, it actually boosts your immune system. And this is evidence of how amazing our bodies are created. But when you are sick or when someone is sick, what do you not want to do? Eat. Eat. Why is that? Because your body is focused on healing. The research is very, very clear. If you fast, your immune system boosts. In fact, if you fast for 36 hours, your immune system is completely rebuilt and it is increased by like 200, 400%. If you look at any sort of advanced like cancer protocols, fasting is a big part of it, okay? Because it reboots the immune system. Uh, corrects human growth hormone, reduces inflammation, and it's really, really good for uh, mental acuity. So one of the other benefits is autophagy. 
So autophagy is a process where basically weak or old cells that are dysfunctional get destroyed. This is like kind of natural selection at its best. If there are abnormal cells that have been allowed to just live because you are just soft and weak and bad food and there's no stress, those bad cells turn into disease like cancer. So as you do things like fasting, it actually increases autophagy, which tells your body to get rid of or kill off all these bad cells. That is why it is so amazing for cancer, or reversing the aging process, okay? Because it destroys bad abnormal cells, okay? Now, if you want to say fasting might be kind of dangerous, I just like to review this study. The longest fast ever recorded was 382 days. Everyone say, oh my gosh. <laughs> That's well beyond me. <laughs> However, he was 456 pounds. Now, here's the thing, is he took very specific multivitamins and very specific electrolytes and minerals. Okay, so you can do those things while you fast. There's other things that you can do when you fast. But basically, he ended up losing 276 pounds, got down to 180 pounds by fasting for just over a year. Now, he was consistently monitored by his doctors blood work and all sorts of stuff to make sure that everything looked good. But he was able to do that because he had massive fat stores. Does that make sense? Like his body had all sorts of stored fuel. So I just use that as an example so that way you can understand, you will not die if you go hungry for 16 hours or 24 hours. I would probably say most of us have enough fat stores to make it 24, 36 hours if you chose to do that. Okay? All right. So just real quick, phase one is zero to four. So if you go four hours without eating, that allows your body to burn the food you just ate. That's typically why people eat like every four hours, breakfast, lunch, dinner, okay? But if you can get through that phase, which is called the anabolic or the growth phase, your body starts to secrete certain enzymes and your body starts to go into phase two, which is the catabolic or breakdown phase. This is where your body starts to utilize fat for fuel or, or start to use stored energy which is glycogen, it's stored sugar, and it's stored in your muscles and it's stored in your liver. So your body is using stored sugars, okay? So it's not just using the sugar that's in your blood from digestion, okay? Once you get to the end of that 16 hours, then your body starts to ramp up that autophagy. So if you can, if you can fast for 16 hours, your body begins the autophagy phase, okay? If you get past 16 hours, autophagy ramps up and your body really starts to destroy all those sick or weak cells. But now you go from your glycogen stores into fat stores. So now your body is able to start utilizing all this excess body fat that you have stored up over all of the years of prepping for hibernation that you've done. All right, and then once you get past 24 or 72 hours, this is when your body starts to move into ketosis. Who's ever heard of ketosis? So your body starts to utilize ketones for fuel because you've depleted all the sugar in your body. And ketones is like jet fuel for your body. Your brain thrives on ketones. You will have the best mental clarity you've ever had in your entire life if you can get to this phase of fasting. So again, zero to four is you're burning the food that you have just ate six four to 16 you're burning some of the stored glycogen and beginning the autophagy once you get past 16 you're really burning fat and again autophagy ramps up past that you're starting to use ketones for fuel because all the sugar is gone benefits are weight loss autophagy increased brain function and then after that again exponential stuff but for you beginners i wouldn't i wouldn't dream of going past 72 hours just don't try that until you get some, some, stuff on, some practice under your belt. So here's some of the obstacles. When you start to go with four hours without food, what do you start to get? Angry. 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 You start to feel fatigue. You start to get headaches or brain fog. So there's a couple of things that you can do to help minimize the negative effects of like that transition. So one of them is that you just uh, uh, stop. Uh, you eat more fat when you are consuming your meals. So the more fat you eat during your meal, the less hungry you'll be. Another real secret is you do water, so tons of water, and lots of electrolytes. So who's ever here heard of like the keto flu? No, okay. So someone who starts to try the keto diet, they get this keto flu, and they get like sick, 
they get fatigued, they feel like they have the flu, they get headaches. It's just a transition of running out of sugar and their metabolism is trying to shift. Now remember, part of this seminar is all about understanding how to create metabolic flexibility. So the goal is to try to teach your body how to utilize fat for fuel, not just be a sugar burner. If you're consistently in a sugar burning mode, you will never burn fat for fuel. So one of the ways you can help avoid all the hangry, the headaches, the fatigue issues, is to make sure you drink lots of water, do your electrolyte supplements, be complex. If you use MCT oil, it's really, really good. Who's ever heard of MCT oil? Medium chain triglyceride. So it's like coconut oil is a long chain triglyceride. MCT oil is just a shorter chain. Your body can turn it into energy significantly faster. In fact, it like barely gets into your digestive system and gets into your bloodstream so quickly. And so if you are doing something like coffee, does everybody like coffee? Okay, coffee is, does not break your fast. So you can wake up and drink coffee in the morning. Okay, and I put stevia in it, doesn't break your fast, it's not gonna wreck my hormones or anything like that. If you put MCT oil on there, it really helps to eliminate that like, gosh dang, I'm starving. What is MCT oil? MCT oil, that's MCT. that medium strain triglyceride. That's what it is, it's MCT oil, it's called MCT oil. You can buy it in the store. It's okay. just healthy oil. It's like a, it's like a, um, it's just healthy oil, it's like coconut oil. Well, I will start with just like a taste a tablespoon. It is a natural laxative. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess I should have put that on a good question. But I said that. So yeah, you just want to start with maybe just a tablespoon, and then maybe work up to like two or so, and that's kind of what you need. Huh? Put it in your tea, or you can just maybe it's take like a shot. Like Any, anything, even if it's cold, you can put it in there. Yeah, does but it, it does something. Does it, it, it doesn't have to. No, you can buy it without a taste. Like coconut oil, you can buy it without a taste. Same with MCT oil. So this is better than coconut oil? It's not better or worse. It's just a shorter chain, so it, it, you absorb it faster, so I like it. Plus, it's more of a liquid. Like, it's very, very fluid, it's very liquidy. Versus coconut oil, can be, it, it can be um, a little bit more. MCT or MTC? Oh, shoot, MCT. MCT. Yeah, okay, my bad. MCT. Type in, type in there. Okay. And then if you do get like the keto flu, uh, activated charcoal is really, really good because part of this process will induce some detoxification. So activated charcoal can help minimize the negative effects of that. Okay. Is that powder? Uh, it can be. Charcoal? Is that powder? Can be. It's a, I, my phone says it's a pill. It's a supplement, it's a, it's a pill. But you can't buy it in a powder form, I guess. It would taste terrible. <laughs> Uh, real quick, if you have if you have a cycle, females, if you have a cycle, there's different times you should or shouldn't fast. So day one through ten of your cycle, it, fasting is great. Eleven through fifteen, don't fast for more than fifteen hours, just because it's really hard on your hormones. Sixteen through nineteen, again, fasting is great. Twenty days until bleeding, I would never fast more than just the evening, like the night. Okay, so I wouldn't I wouldn't skip breakfast. And again, this stuff will be in uh, in our closed group for additional content, like if you didn't get that. And it should be in your slides, I think. So how, so we did talk about breakfast being the most important meal of the day. Yes or yes? Yeah. Okay, so how I break my breakfast, how I break fast every day is through a smoothie. It is one of the easiest, the quickest ways. I'm not saying it necessarily replaces my meal, like lunch, but it's the best way to break a fast. So, so my smoothie is a really clean, grass-fed whey protein. You can do bone broth protein and stuff like that too. Now, the reason I like this the most is because, again, it's from a clean source. If you do protein smoothies, but it's just like from Target, Walmart, or like GNC, it's not grass-fed, huh? Costco. Costco. It's not grass-fed, and it's full of probably a bunch of junk fillers, artificial sweeteners probably, like sucralose is really a cheap product they put in there, okay? So it's just really highly inflammatory, and there's some toxic ingredients in there. So ours is really clean, it's very anti-inflammatory because it's grass-fed, grass-finished, and it uses stevia as a sweetener. So it's, it's just, it's super clean, it's why I like ours the most. So anti-inflammatory, it assists with detox, uh, cation process because it has a lot of antioxidant precursors in it um, and it helps boost your metabolism if you can consume a really good whey protein. I'll just tell you this quick story. I had a patient come in, a stubborn old dude. You probably know some of them. He came in because his back hurt and we started adjusting him and of course he did incredible, did awesome, but he was pre-diabetic, but he would not do any of my nutritional recommendations. 
except for he would start doing a smoothie in the morning. That's all he did. He just did a smoothie and told him to like do it with his coffee. So he did the smoothies in the morning. He didn't even do the intermittent fasting. He just did the smoothie in the morning. A couple months down the road, he goes back to his doctor. He was no longer pre-diabetic because it helps to increase insulin sensitivity. Okay. So I also put the greens in my smoothie just because I want the live enzymes. It's the detoxification process, the anti-inflammatory responses. It helps with the uh, 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 inflammatory issues as well. Plus, you're just supercharging your body with like live enzymes. I don't care how good your nutrition is. None of you eat enough healthy vegetables. If if it's from a bad source, it can absolutely. However, if you are dairy sensitive, yeah. it could create some inflammatory responses. This is casein free, which is typically casein is what causes the inflammatory response. But you're right. I have a bone broth protein for people who are sensitive to that. Like if you've done a food sensitivity test and like you cannot do any sort of like whey, then I would do the bone broth. And that's really good for gut healing. Okay. Which so just FYI, on Tuesday I'm releasing my uh, gut health webinar. If you're interested at all, you can let my patients get access to that. It's just about healing the gut. So okay. uh, this is also just something that I use. If you're just so like I had a cruise a couple months ago and I just wanted to like look really good. I know selfish, right? <laughs> Super vain. Anyway, so this is some of the stuff that I like to use. This is the metabolic burn. It's just a supplement that really helps to activate triglyceride oxidation. So it helps with fat burning metabolism, promotes fat loss, it helps to regulate those hormones we talked about, and it helps to fight any sort of cravings. So again, it's just one of those secrets. If I'm really trying to trim for whatever vanity I, I want, then this is one of the things that I will use to assist with that, okay? And that's kind of part of the bundle. We'll kind of talk about this, but if you want any sort of like of the stuff that I'm talking about, I have five bundles that I put together. There's an order sheet on the back that you real quickly put to the back of your sheet. You'll just see like if you want uh, the bundles. There's two bundles. We have just the basic bundle, which is just the smoothie and that metabol or the max fit. And then if you want the advanced bundle, it includes that uh, metabolic burn and the cleanse, which I'll talk about here in a second. But stress number two. Number two is stress. You can literally stress yourself into diabetes. Let me say that again. You can stress yourself into diabetes. And how that happens is it increases ghrelin and, and cortisol. And cortisol is one of those stress hormones with, 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 with this amazing intelligent design behind it. When you have elevated cortisol, your body releases stored sugar from the muscles and the liver into the blood. But if you don't burn up that energy, it goes into fat storage. That's why when you're stressed out, a lot of times you're hungry because the ghrelin level is elevated and you consume food and you have your body dumping in sugar into the bloodstream, but you don't use it up. It's also why innately, if you're stressed out, people like to pace. It's just that, that's your body trying to utilize the energy you're giving it. But if you don't burn up the energy, you'll store it as fat. So stress causes in like weight loss resistance. So you could do really good with intermittent fasting, you could do really good with the max living advanced plan, but if you have high levels of stress, then you have a lot working against you, okay? So how you overcome that is physical exercise is great for stress, so working out, walking, yard work, practicing gratefulness, breathing exercises, vitamin, B vitamins specifically, magnesium, potassium, vitamin D, and my very favorite though is adaptogen herbs, and my favorite is ashwagandha. Who's ever heard of adaptogen herbs or ashwagandha? You've heard of that? If you consume ashwagandha, like, so I have just a crazy stress, like my lifestyle is very chaotic. I run one of the largest wellness centers in the state of Oklahoma. I have lots of employees. We just had twins, beat both girls, and they're 10 months old. So like, and I have a seven year old who's just a sit fire. So like, I just have a lot of chaos going, so I'm very keen on making sure I take my adaptogen herbs, and it helps to minimize the negative effects of that cortisol hormone I talked about. So there's one supplement that I just take very regularly, and that is called Max Fit because it contains ashwagandha that minimizes the negative effects of stress hormone. So if you just have a crazy stress out life, I would highly recommend that you start adaptogens. It just helps to minimize the negative effects of stress. Because again, you should try to eliminate as much of the stress as possible, but that's not the reality. Some of our greatest sources of stress are our greatest joys in life. Yes or yes? Yes. <laughs> okay. So do something healthy, exercise, or maybe take an adaptogen. So my favorite is that 
metabolic fit. So again, it helps with metabolism. It helps to reduce blood pressure because when you're stressed out, where's your blood pressure go? Um, same thing with uh, uh, decrease. So it helps with like muscle mass and stuff. So when should you take that? Like I've heard, like sometimes it helps with sleep. Do you yeah. take it at night? Like, is there a best time? I, you know what? Personally, I take mine kind of just in the day mm -hmm. because I take other stuff at night. Yeah, right. So it depends. If you have hard time with stress at night, like like that anxiety stuff. I maybe try it at night. If you don't and you sleep okay, take it in the day. I mean, I would, that's something I would just play with. Yeah. Okay, so number three is minimizing toxicity. This is a big one, okay? So there are significant amount of toxins that we're exposed to on a regular basis, okay? And I'll provide a little bit more of the content info in the closed group, okay? So in our challenge. But the main stuff are pesticides, Household, like personal hygiene products, plastics, uh, makeup issues, oxytoxins, or even alcohol. So this is the stuff that you will get exposed to. You really need to identify what you are using, what you're con constantly putting on your skin or in your house or on your body. You've got to be very aware of that. There's an app I like to use called Yucca or the EWG, the world, uh, what does that stand for? EWG. Anyway. Yeah, it has an app that you can scan products and it'll tell you how toxic they are, including stuff like food. Now, females, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but you're at significantly greater risk than guys. Just real quick, reading through this, shampoos, eyeshadow, lipstick, perfume, nail varnish, hairspray, blush, foundation, deodorant, lotion, who uses all of those? 475 different chemicals that you're exposing yourself to. They're called obesogens. They're endocrine disruptors. They are what cause estrogen dominance. They are causing your body inability to lose weight, but they are also sprinting toward disease. There are two, fundamentally, there are two causes of disease. How many? Two. two. Toxicity and deficiency. It's, it's kind of that basic. A deficiency could be in nutrition, vitamins, minerals, oxygen, nerve supply, and toxicity, kind of a big category. So it's important for you to pay attention to. It's also a deep dark rabbit hole, because if you use that Yucca app or whatever, it's just like overwhelming. You scan, you scan, you scan, everything is just out to kill you. But the goal is to, to eliminate as much as you can and then get so healthy you can handle the stress. Does that make sense? Because you can't avoid all the toxins. There's paint in the room, right? Sometimes you drink out of plastic or sometimes you have Starbucks. Lots of pesticides on that. Yep. Um, I, I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome. Yep. 20 years ago, I had uh, a block surgery. I had peritonitis throughout my whole body. I did um, chelation therapy yep. to clean up my blood. Which is a but detox, which is a which detox process. Detox process, two years. Yeah. To Intense. clean up my blood. Yep. Um, but I am with a company that I am with a company called Jordan Essentials mm -hmm. that I found out two seven has none of these chemicals yeah. in our products. Yeah. There's so, some really good, really good products out there. You just have to be aware. So like my yeah, wife yeah. has gone through like all the research in the world. Yeah. And she uses uh one hundred percent pure. Like that's yeah. the brand, like the makeup and the soaps and stuff that we use. So but there are healthy brands. Here's the thing is like you gotta buy it anyway. Yeah. Buy the healthier detergent. It's not really that much more sense. Is buy the healthier makeup. It, it works the same. Right. Okay, you just got to be very conscious and aware of it. So here's kind of the main problem with toxicity is that it causes fatty liver. Now when people think of fatty liver, they think of, they typically think about alcoholic induced fatty liver, okay, or cirrhosis. But the majority of fatty liver is non-alcohol fatty liver disease, and it's from too much fructose and it's from too much exposures to toxin without enough detoxing on a regular basis. Your body is created to detox. You can handle toxicity, but if you overwhelm it, you've got to do some really great protocols to make sure you, you get the toxins out. Whether it's really, really aggressive, like a chelation therapy, or it's just taking a supplement on a regular basis that assists your liver. Okay? So 25% of people with non-alcohol non fatty liver disease are skinny, and they're twice as likely to die. Because people who are skinny typically think that they don't have fatty liver disease. Or they think they're healthy. Like, guys, and I'll, 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 I'll say that to later.
So here are the major problems with fatty liver. You do not store excess sugar. So if your liver, if you're exposed to a lot of toxins, you have fatty liver, which by the way, there's like no symptoms, okay? So if you live in this toxic world, just assume you probably need to work on your liver a little bit, but you cannot store sugar. So you're really sensitive to be able to consume sugar. So someone who has a really healthy liver can consume more sugar, right? They can eat more sugar and not have the disease process. So the cleaner, the healthier your liver is, the more your body can handle the stress of sugar. Does that, does that make sense? Okay, so uh, you cannot detox if your liver is bogged down, so you can't handle as much exposure to toxins, so you're more sensitive to toxicity. You can't absorb vitamins and minerals because you just, you're just you not producing bile. That's where your liver, your liver produces bile. Uh, you cannot detox stress hormones. If your liver is stressed and you get stressed and elevated cortisol levels, your body cannot handle those hormones very well. Versus if your liver is really, really healthy and you have those elevated stress, your body can handle the stress a lot better. So again, the goal is to try to not eliminate all the stress and the goal is to get your body to handle the stress. Does the, does the philosophical difference make sense to you? Yes? Okay. You cannot convert T3 to T4. So if you have a thyroid dysfunction or you know someone who has a thyroid dysfunction, I guarantee you if they focus on liver health, it will dramatically improve their, their, their thyroid. And then also you cannot produce testosterone if your liver is junk. So if you know someone who has low T, any guys out there, puppies or whatever, if you clean up their liver, the odds that their, uh, their testosterone goes up and they don't need the artificial stuff is, is, is really, really great. So the root causes of fatty liver, like I said, fructose, alcohol, toxic exposure, medication is the number one cause of toxicity in the United States. The United States makes up 5% of the world's population. How much? Five. Five. We consume 80% of the world's pharmaceuticals. <laughs> I want you to think about this. The United States is one of the sickest countries in the entire world. We have one of the highest infant mortality rates. We have more heart disease, more cancers, more diabetes than any other country in the entire world. Yet we take the majority of medications. So if going to the medical doctor, getting diagnosed, and getting put on a drug, if that was what it was to create health, then we should be the healthiest country in the entire world. Yes or yes? yes. But we are not. We are the sickest. So again, definition of, insa of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Okay? Uh, elevated insulin, uh, uh, damaged oils, uh, constant exposure to allergic who said that the food allergy stuff, if you do a lot of dairy or whatever, you're allergic to dairy, you get uh, liver issues, or chronic stress will obviously affect your liver too. So these are the root causes of fatty liver. So how to reverse the fatty liver? Mass living advanced plans, so really good nutrition protocols. Intermittent fasting helps to deplete the glycogen stores, like I mentioned. Quality proteins, healthier fats help to increase bile production. Very specific uh, detoxification protocols. Choline is a, a liver scrubber. So it's found in cruciferous vegetables, eggs, liver, grass-fed beef. It's also in very specific proteins like our cleanse. Okay, so our max cleanse has that. And then uh, glutathione is an antioxidant. So consuming stuff like this really helps to reverse any fatty liver issues or just improves. If you don't have fatty liver, you should, you should still do it. So it improves your liver's ability to handle stresses. Does that make sense? How would you know if you have fatty liver? You should just assume you do. <laughs> so, I mean, how are you just testing? Uh, but I, I guarantee you, everybody here probably does. I mean, even if you live really clean and you eat all organic, but like you live in a house with carpet or your bed, which is full of formaldehyde or a flame retardant, like it's just all there. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. So, uh, hydration is critical. And then I talked about the Max Cleanse. Uh, this is part of the advanced bundle. And this is really gonna help accelerate liver health, which helps your body detox, which is gonna help your body burn fat for fuel. So this is part of the advanced bundle for those of you that need to work on your liver health. So obviously exercise is critical. The more muscle mass you have, the more fat or the more sugar you can store. It's also the higher metabolic rate. So again, the more muscle mass you have, the less likely you are to develop diabetes. In fact, it's almost impossible for someone who's a bodybuilder to get type two diabetes. <laughs> because they have so much muscle mass, so body can store so much sugar. Just remember, sugar stored in your liver and in your muscle. Plus, the more muscle mass you have, the more lean muscle, the more calories you burn at rest. The more muscle mass you have, the more calories you can consume and not store fat. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's why it's important to exercise, to build lean muscle. It also helps to burn the sugar that you eat. So if you're consuming X amount of calories, if you move, you burn those calories up. So you don't have to intermittent fast or calorie restrict 
if you're moving a little bit more. And it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Walking burns calories. I would I would suggest doing a little bit more exercise to a part to a point where you're breathing heavy, and that walking might be enough for you. But the goal is to breathe heavy. Like that's the goal. Goal for exercise is to breathe heavy. Okay. In fact, actually, everybody stand up real quick. All right, this is an example of intermittent uh, or, or uh, high intensity or hit training. So I'm going to just have us exercise for a total of 40 seconds. So we're going to do 20 seconds on and then we do 20 seconds off. I just realized my watch is not working. I'm just running this for show. No function to it. All right, I'll just count in my head. So what I'm going to do is just run in place. If your doctor, here's my side note, if your doctor told you to not exercise, you can just walk in place. But the goal is to maybe move a little bit. So. You're gonna run in place. Ready, set, go. Run in place. Pump your arms. Now, clearly, the harder you go, the more effective this is. It's only 20 seconds of exercise. Go, 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 go. All right, rest. Okay, so we're gonna rest for 10 seconds. You breathe. In. Hold it for a sec. Out. In. Hold it for a sec. Out. Okay, here we go. Ready? Run. Up, drum. Move, 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 move. All right, that was 15 seconds. There you go. Okay. So the idea is if you move a little bit, it doesn't take a lot of exercise. Like, because here's the thing: is if you exercise where this is just like this hit type of training, where it's high intensity, low duration. Technically, your body will burn fat for up to 36 hours post-exercise. Versus if you just walk, you're burning fat while you walk, but then you're done. So these sort of exercises are so popular because it just helps to create this metabolic, it's called a, a burn and afterburn effect, to help your body burn fat for hours, hours post-exercise. As long as you do not put something into your body to increase your insulin. Because as soon as you increase your insulin, your fat burning hormones turn off. So if you give your if you give your if you, if you give your kid like a sucker after gymnastics, like they pass out on my kids' on my kids' gymnastics, it's so nasty. It instantly turns off all of our fat burning hormones. Most of the kids there are there to lose weight, probably. Okay? So if you're doing like Gatorade even afterward, you're just ruining all the hard work you just did. Okay, so go have a seat. So then what should you take right after you do that? Out of here. At, at, for what reason? Like what do you mean? Not? Inhibited. Well, I mean for like recovery, for like replacing electrolytes. So the best version of Gatorade is like coconut water or water with an electrolyte supplement in it. So like we have some very specific like our supplements that I take. Um, or like if you're doing it for like building like lean muscle, like do a protein smoothie with no sugar in it that's soup swing with stevia, stuff like that. Now, I will say this though, if you can exercise on an empty stomach, you're gonna blow through your glycogen stores and you're more likely to get into that phase of autophagy and fat burning. So if you work out in the morning without eating, you're more likely to get into that fat burning mode faster. Okay. So, so here's kind of a time, like, a, like, a, like a, a, a time. So we're shifting into this other thought process. So all of these things are really good info, yes or yes? Yes. But it's all what support health. Very different from what controls health. And I, and I mean that, and I say this. So like, could you eat all organic exercise every single day and still get heart disease or cancer? Yeah. Absolutely. And when you look at like, like what people think health is, most of the time people think that health is about how we feel. Yes or yes? The problem with that is like heart disease, cancer, diabetes are all called the silent killers because you don't love. You don't feel it. You don't feel, what's the first symptom of heart disease? It's the heart attack. When do people typically find out that they have cancer? In what stages? Four. Three or four. My mom found out end stage four was given the weekend to live. Health is not about how you feel. My mom felt pretty good the month before. But was she healthy or sick? Super sick. Can you be skinny and still get heart disease or cancer? Yeah, you can be super fit and still get sick. So, so health isn't about what you look like or how much you exercise or even necessarily how good your nutrition is or how you feel. 
those are important, and we just spent a long time talking about those things, but that's what supports health. It's not what controls health, okay? So what controls health, so think of it like this, like a, if I was to look up, if I was to look up in like a World Health Organization a dictionary, what is the definition of health? It is about how your body functions and heals. It is how, it's how your body regenerates. It is how your liver functions. It's how your body is able to adapt to stress. That is what is the definition of health. It's how your body heals and functions. So if your, if your lungs function at 100%, can you have asthma? No, because that's what asthma is, dysfunction of the lungs. If your body regulated your blood sugar at 100%, can you have diabetes? No, because that's what diabetes is. Your body's inability to regulate blood sugar. If your body regulated your blood pressure at 100%, so if you had stress and it goes up and then your stress goes away, your blood pressure goes down, can you have hypertension? No, because hypertension means your body doesn't regulate blood pressure, it just stays up. Your body's inability to heal function. The job of your immune system is to kill cancer cells, yes or yes? So if your immune system kills cancer cells at 100% on a consistent basis, can you build like tumors and cancer? No, because your immune system is killing all the bad cells at 100%. Does that make sense? Health is defined by your body's ability to heal and function. Oklahoma allergies, you ever heard of them? <laughs> so if someone walks outside and they breathe in the pollen or the cedar or whatever, and they just get blasted with this crazy response and their nose is clogged and their eyes are watering, but yet someone else can stand right next to them and breathe the same air and nothing happens. Is it the allergen that caused him to get the sinus issue? No, it's, the, it's that person's inability to handle the environment. Because this person's breathing the same thing. So it's not the environment, it's that his body or that person's body is not able to regulate their immune responses. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So just like heart health, if you go to the doctor and they test, you, they test your heart health, they do a stress test because they want to see how your heart responds to stress. Does that make sense? So health is about how your body functions and heals. So if that was the case, if your health depended on how your body functions and heals, then I should look at what would control all the health and healing in your body, yes? So I'm gonna take you back to grade school anatomy. Ready for this? What is the number one organ that controls how everything else functions? What is the master control center? The brain. It is your brain and spinal cord. It is your central nervous system. Now it's not like the brain itself. It's not the tissue. Like because if I had a dead body right here, they have a brain and spinal cord, but if I cut their arm, like nothing happens to the cut. I could put a bunch of supplements in there. The cut doesn't heal, does it? What's, what's that person, what's the, what's, the, what's, the, what's the corpse missing that we all have? Life? It's kind of defined all sorts of different ways. It could be called the spark, it could be called, it could be called the soul, it could be called the power. It's just your innate intelligence. It's what animates us. It's the living power. It's what happened when the body was formulated in your mother's womb that there was this amazing thing that allowed all the cells to develop and then nine months later, there's a baby. That power that created you is the power that runs your heart. It's what runs your liver. It's what runs your body's ability to regulate blood sugar. That's the power that resides in the brain though. And we know that because if I cut all the nerves that go to the heart, what would instantly happen to the heart? It would instantly turn off. Is that a belief or a fact? That, that's, just a, that's a law of anatomy. If I cut all the nerves to the heart, instantly the heart would turn off. It doesn't matter how young or how old, or how fit that person is. There's no more life energy to the heart. It's like cutting power to the TV. Doesn't matter how expensive your TV is, there's just no more power, okay? Because the all, so God put all the healing power right here inside the brain. It has to flow down the spinal cord and across the nerves to every single cell tissue or in your entire body. So for your heart to beat, your lungs to breathe, to digest food, to regulate blood sugar, your body has to communicate at 100%. Because if I cut the nerve to the heart, the heart functions at zero and you are what? You're dead. Now, let's scale that back, because that's kind of an extreme example, right, a cut nerve. But what happens if you have a slip or a fall or a birth process that's traumatic or a car accident or a sports injury and something shifts out of alignment and it puts pressure on the nerve? Who's ever heard of a pinched nerve before? You've heard of a pinched nerve before? 
So if that nerve is getting pitched going to the heart, it's not like the heart would die right away, but it's gonna interfere with a little bit of that communication. So if that's occurring, is that heart gonna function better or worse over time? Worse. Worse. So what that means is that a misalignment or a back issue that pinches the nerve is gonna cause a what? A heart issue or a health issue. Doesn't matter how good the nutrition is. If there's damage, you're gonna create dysfunctions because that's what health is. Health is about how your body functions and heals. So you have a nerve chart that looks like this. I want you to look at this real quick. Yeah, it looks, I'm gonna hold this up. So it looks just like this. So pull this out real fast. And then it's just like basic anatomy chart. So at the very top, it says C1. See that on the left side under vertebra, the C1. That the, the, the bones are labeled by T1, T2, C1, L3, whatever. And you can see the next column right here is what that nerve controls. So blood supply to the head. If you go to the very far right, you can see the effects of a misalignment. If you have a misalignment in that area of your spine, and it affects that area of the nerve system, it can affect these sort of symptoms. So headaches is the number one, you see that? Now, if a normal person gets a headache, what do most people go do? They take a what? A Tylenol. But do you have a headache because you have a deficiency of Tylenol? No, of course not. Something's going on. Your body is, 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 that, is, that, is that check engine light that's going off. That's what those symptoms are. If you go a little bit further, nerve in the middle part of the neck goes to the thyroid. If there's pressure on the nerve in the thyroid, does your thyroid get stronger or weaker? Hypothyroidism. Nerves in your upper back, but your heart or lungs. If the nerves in your upper back go to your stomach and your stomach isn't functioning properly and it can't regulate stomach acid very well, what do you get? Indigestion, acid reflux, or heartburn. But what do, what do Americans take for heartburn? Pepsi. Pepsi. Yeah, they, they take some sort of medication. It doesn't fix the issue. In fact, actually, those sort of medications lead to more damage or more disease processes. Nerves in the lower back go into the colon. If there's pressure on the nerve going to colon, it could create some sort of spasm issue, whether it's constipation, diarrhea, or IBS, because there's stress and damage there. So, this is Susie. Susie came in the office. She had debilitating migraines. She was on migraines. She was on migraine medication, and she took terminal shots because her migraines are so bad. She had blood pressure, thyroid issues, weight loss resistance, chronic fatigue, and fibromyalgia. Who's ever heard of those things? Who knows someone who has a couple of those? So in her world, she went to the medical doctor, diagnosed her with all this stuff, and the medical doctor gave her what? Medicine. Medication. And said, I'm sorry, you have these problems, here's your drugs, you're gonna have to take that for the rest of your life. You are broken. You are damaged. There's no hope. Here's your drugs, good luck. No cure. No cure in her world. She was on Weight Watchers, she did personal training, and she even then, chiropractors before because her back hurt her neck hurt but she wasn't getting any better she finally came to her office she was referred by one of her best friends that was just twisting her arm for probably months to try to get in and come see us she finally reluctantly did because she was so doubtful because again she tried stuff before she came in and this is what her x-ray of her neck looked like now the other chiropractor took an x-ray but didn't really talk about it just said you have damage in there now, when you look at the side view of the neck, it is critically important to have a 45 degree curve. It is called the arc of life. Everybody do this, put a good curve in your hand. See how nice and loose the skin is right there? Okay, now lose the curve. See how tight that gets? The main job of your spine is to protect your spinal cord. I mean, think about how the spines work. Inside the canal, there's, your, there's the cord, and then the nerves branch off, and then that's how you get life to the body. When you lose the curve, the arc of life, it actually stretches the spinal cord, just like if you were to stretch a rubber band. So it can actually cause thinning to the core, just like if you stretch a rubber band. So it's not just one nerve getting pinched, it's the whole spinal cord getting compressed. And that area of the body obviously controls health to everything, but this top area is at a 15 degree angle, has to be at 31. So pressure on the brain stem, so guess what that was causing? Her headaches and migraines. There's a reverse curve in the middle part of the neck. It's actually curving forward two degrees. So it's 108% loss of curvature. This nerve in the middle part of the neck goes to an organ right here. What's this organ called? In charge of your metabolism and your energy levels? Thyroid. Your thyroid. How's her thyroid functioning? Terrible. Hypothyroid, sluggish. That's why she's on all these thyroxins. There's not enough thyroxin in the world 
that can give pressure off that nerve to allow that thyroid to heal. When she'd been to the chiropractor, the chiropractor cracked her neck and kind of helped her feel better for a little bit, but it didn't really fix anything. Because there's two types of chiropractic. There's that my back hurts, pop my back, and then you have corrective care. Getting adjusted might make you feel a little bit better, but the goal should be able to do what? Realize. It's to correct your spine. It's to stop the degenerative process. It's to create strength and stability. It is to get pressure off of your nerve system. Because if we unpinch the nerve that goes to the thyroid, what happens to the thyroid? Does it get weaker or stronger? People have this weird thing where they don't think they can heal because the medical doctors tell them that there is no cure and there's no hope. And I want you to understand this. It's very, very true in their world. Drugs do not heal you. The only thing that can heal you is the power that God put inside of your body. And we know that. If you had a cut on your arm, you have a 100% faith that that cut will heal. Yes or yes? What makes you think that your thyroid can't heal? What makes you think that your digestion or your blood pressure or your cholesterol can't heal? The reason you think that is because the medical system has ingrained you to think that you need drugs. And that's not true. Your body's designed to heal. Your natural state is health. But when you have toxicity issues or deficiency issues or subluxations, pressure in your nervous system, your body is not functioning properly. It's not healthy and you build disease. Disease is not something you catch. Disease is in the absence of hope, of health. Disease is not something you catch, it is in the absence of health. By restoring health, disease tends to fade away. So what happens to her? Well, she loses a bunch of weight, all her migraines are gone, her thyroid is functioning again, so she's off her thyroid medication, her digestion is improved, improved, her energy levels are better, she's able to play with her kids and enjoy life. She got her life back. Simply because we focused on getting her healthy, not just simply covering up the disease process. Play a video for you guys, but I'm gonna skip it. I had a testimony from someone who went through the uh, weight loss 45 day challenge. She did awesome, and this is kind of cool stuff. She was someone who was really active and really healthy. Like, if you looked at her, you would assume that she does everything right. She does a lot of stuff really good. She exercises consistently, it's pretty good. Her dad is a chiropractor, but she came to her seminar because she had a friend say, Hey, you gotta come check this guy out. You gotta come check out his office. It's really cool. Came into the office. Her dad is a chiropractor, and I'm not talking bad about her dad but she had a reverse curl in her neck, just like that picture I showed you. Severe damage, pressure on her nervous system. She started to tweak a little bit of her nutrition. She started on some of the correct nutraceuticals, and she already took the supplements, but she started taking the correct stuff. She started getting correction in her neck. She lost 12 pounds in 45 days, energy through the roof, skin through the roof. I mean, she had all these amazing transformations, even though she felt like she was doing everything right, and she would have categorized herself as doing really well but there was lots of room for improvement. She just didn't know what was in there. Because the only way you can typically know if there's damage to stuff like that is, is, is by getting an evaluation or getting checked. So at the beginning, I said like, if you're, if you're someone who is interested in maybe checking out our office, our office again is just down the road. It's behind Starbucks over there on Flood Street, like just south of like the, the Victory Church right there. These are warning signs that you could have subluxations or misalignments in your spine causing dysfunction or disease process. Now, is every headache caused by misalignment in your neck? Well, of course not. But the only way to know is to get an evaluation, is to, is to see if there's pressure. Mental issues, pressure on the nerves in your lower back, blood pressure issues, depression. If you have a misalignment in the upper part of your neck, it affects serotonin level regulation. And if your serotonin levels don't regulate, your chemistry is out of balance, well, you get stuff like depression. That's why the medical doctor wants to put you on a, chemi on a chemical, which have crazy side effects. But instead of doing stuff like that, if we can just figure out how to help your body regulate its own chemistry by removing interference and pressure on the nervous system, the body's gonna do one thing, and that is to start to function better with the human, okay? Numbs and tingling, so pinch nerve into the hand or pinch nerve in the lower back, neck pain, dizziness, fatigue, acid reflux, food issues, allergy issues, ear infections, cold, flus, constipation, attention issues, ADD issues, sleep issues. These are some of the most common things that we see people heal from once we start focusing on getting the body healthy getting pressure off the nervous system. But the only way to do that is to figure out if there's stress or pressure by doing very specific thermal imaging, nerve scans, and digital x-rays. So if you were to go to the medical doctor and get a consultation with an orthopedic, exams, full spine digital x-rays, thermal imaging to locate areas of stress in your nervous system that they can't even do, but if you were to go to the medical doctor and do all of those things, what would that cost? One million dollars. <laughs> Your insurance is terrible. We'd all agree that it's expensive to go to the doctor, yes or yes? Yes. 
But if it was able to locate the exact cause of your problem and to give you the idea of what you could do to start correcting yourself and get healthy and feel better and get the energy back and come off medications, would it be worth a couple thousand bucks? Of course it would. Now in our office, it's around 290 bucks to get all those things done, to find the exact cause and to come up with a solution. Anytime we come out and we do events like this, for people who are looking for help, we reduce our in new patient intake fee to a $29 appointment fee. And it waives the cost of the consultation, testing, exams, thermal imaging, nerve scans, full spine digital x-rays. It reduces that entire thing to a $29 appointment fee. I do that for one reason. I am here to save lives, period. I took time out of my day, away from my kids, because I know someone here is looking for help. And we want to make sure that we provide that opportunity for you. Okay, so we have very specific times available, maybe next week. If you want to do that, it's a $29 appointment fee to reserve your spot. We're a very busy office. We do that simply because I want to make sure you show up. If my team is going to take time to schedule you in, to prepare, I want to make sure you show up. Is that fair enough? Yes. So if you're interested on taking advantage and saving the 280 bucks or whatever it is, it's 29 bucks. This is Dr. Carly. She will help you sign up. You have that stress survey. Make sure you take your contact info to her. She'll get you lined up. Also, make sure you put your contact information on there. Turn it in if you want to be part of the 45 day challenge. Okay? If you're interested in any of the bundles, stuff that I talked about, this is Leslie with the beautiful little baby. She will help you with that as well. Okay? And there's some special discounts that we do at these events. I think it's like 10 or 15% off of the bundles. So if you're wanting to get checked, talk to the girls, take advantage of our special discount to get the evaluation. I will say this though, it also includes the report of findings where I get to sit down with you and go through the results and talk about what is going on. If you have any problem, if I know I can help, I will give you recommendations. I will go through insurance information. I'll talk about total cost out of pocket, how many visits I think it'll take. We will come up with a plan of action of what it would look like if you choose to take action and move forward. The 29 bucks gets the exam and that follow-up consultation to go through everything. Does that make sense? Okay, so if you're interested, talk to Dr. Carly. The supplements are available. If you have any questions, I'm gonna hang out for a little bit and talk about maybe the 45 day challenge. Other than that, I went like four minutes over, I think. I know, I always do that. <laughs> I appreciate you guys' time. I really hope and pray that you took a couple things away. If you have any questions, please come up and ask. All right guys, thank you.